Life in Arkansas is definitely slow paced compared to the other tech hubs around the country like San Francisco or definitely New York. Very, we're very far away from those places right now. There's a lot of outdoor stuff to do, a lot of lakes, a lot of hiking, and there's not a lot of uh, big distractions for sure. So I can kind of focus on the business, focus on hanging out with my family and kind of a slower pace of life for sure. Sometimes when I need to do a little thinking, I love to grab my guitar and just kind of doodle and stare at the code until I have some clue what I want to do. Most programmers have this feeling of being overwhelmed sometimes. You kind of feel like you're inundated with just, here's a new tool, check out this. Here's a new library, you need to be learning this. The 10 frameworks you need to learn in 2022. So when I took a look at Laravel, it was very clear, okay, this is somebody who didn't just release a tool and he's going to abandon it two weeks later. Two weeks later. Two weeks later. Two weeks later. Many of us were really strongly considering leaving for Ruby on Rails or Python or something else because there had been so many little frameworks in PHP that none of them ever really got to the point where it was giving us the opportunity to program the way the rest of the modern web was. Back at the time, PHP had a bit of a bad rap and there was a time when I started to think, oh, maybe I need to upgrade my language, move to something a bit more serious or professional. It really feels to me like Laravel kind of brought PHP back into the spotlight and really made it feel like a good choice for building modern web applications again. It had excellent documentation. The developer experience was very good. And just looking at the documentation, it was instant magic for me. It was just something that was really clean, really expressive, really flexible for what I needed to do. And it was just everything that I had wasted my life writing over and over and over and over again was all built in there. It was all perfectly aligned. There was great tutorials, really helpful people. Laravel makes it easier to write good PHP code. Like really, really easy because it takes care of routing or database access, whatever. And it's flexible and Laravel grows like a plant. <laughs> This was bullshit, I'm sorry. <laughs> I could tell that whoever made it sort of had an obsession with making things expressive and simple and clean. It was just an aesthetic to the framework and I think almost everyone in the Laravel community would say and agree that Taylor sort of takes attention to detail to a level that probably nobody else does. Taylor's definitely got a bit of awareness of good branding and how to create a community that's modern and passionate and you know a little bit flashy, a little bit exciting, but not in a cheesy way or anything like that, like it's genuine. Laravel bought the idea of simplicity and that came from Taylor. Taylor is interesting because he is super minimal in what he likes to do. Like there are things when you write code that have no effect on how the application runs. And I was noticing with the framework that he does it everywhere. And when I mean everywhere, it's everywhere. It's down to how he will form uh, a comment. You've probably heard other people talk about this already, but one of the most famous things is the way he structures like the code comments in the Laravel source code. So that every comment is three lines long. And each line is like three characters shorter than the one before. And he does it over and over throughout the entire framework. There's probably a hundred cases of that. And again, it doesn't make any difference, but I find that so appealing um, because it's, again, it's an attention to detail that you do not see anywhere else. And you know when you care that much about things like that that literally don't matter um, how much care must be going into the things that actually do matter that you might not even notice as a user of the tool. If it's open source, it's free, but if it's a product, you put a lot of focus on it. And Taylor has been dealing with the framework as a product since day one, even before monetizing around it. He's always coming up with new ideas and new projects or new ways to do things easier in Laravel. And I really like that because it inspires us, not just Laravel, the whole PHP community, actually. Yeah, oh, I can do that. I can blow smoke up his ass all day, no problem. Taylor built Laravel in a way that makes people's lives better. And it was intentional. And sometimes that's because as a programmer, my programming job is easier. But also, as, as a non-programmer, it's easier for me to join this community. So Taylor's personality comes through very much in Laravel, and in the community, and in the code. 
Everyone asks me why I called it Laravel, and there's really not any big, uh, you know, magical story about where that name comes from. I was actually having so much trouble coming up with a name for Laravel that I just thought, I'm just gonna think of random words, just like, just like gobbledygook, you know, make up my own language basically. And just like the word Laravel came to me because it rhymed with, um, I was playing um, a game at the time that had like a boat in it called like a caravel, you know, like the big, big ship with like sails and stuff or something like that. And I was like, what rhymes with that? And thought Laravel and I was like, that sounds like something I would use, you know what I mean? <laughs> like that sounds like a professional development framework. So I just stuck with Laravel and that's what it's been ever since. This is Hot Springs, Arkansas. This is where I grew up. This is a town with a lot of history, a lot of history for me because I started my programming journey here, built my first website, and pretty much spent my entire childhood here. So it has a special place in my heart because this is where my journey really got started. So when I first started building Laravel, I didn't have any plans of releasing it. I was just building it to solve my own problems, to build my own businesses. And then once I got like five or six months into it, I was like, maybe I have something here that would be interesting to people. Um, because it was sort of like a fresh take on how to write PHP applications. It was a little bit polarizing in the PHP community because it's very opinionated and it's very pragmatic. My heart and my passion is empowering the individual developer to build something cool because that's really goes back to the origin of Laravel, which was me in my apartment with a business idea. How can I launch it? You know, how can I build it? productively, efficiently, and quickly, and get it out there for the world. And so I think Laravel was always just sort of rebellious. Let's kind of step back and build something totally new from a fresh perspective and really focus on being fast, productive, and fun to use for the developer. This is Lakeside High School. This is where I went to school when I was a kid. And this is where I built my first computer programs uh, on my TI-83 graphing calculator to give me all the answers on my tests. And I also got started in web design here because I was in computer lab and helped update the school website and things like that. So this is uh, kind of the beginning of my career, you might say, right here. And then in college, I majored in information technology. And once I graduated, I was hired by a large trucking company that's based here in Arkansas. And that's where I really learned like real world uh, programming. And it's also where I first kind of got exposed to open source and people that like to program in their free time, which was not something I was really exposed to uh, before that. So I think I first sort of became friends with Taylor back in probably 2015. He, I think, knew who I was from being involved in the Laravel community, and I, of course, knew who he was as the creator of the framework. And we were just kind of like casual internet friends for a while. But then around that time, we were both also doing a lot of conference speaking. And there was one conference we went to, which was ZendCon in Las Vegas. And when we went there, Taylor decided for that trip he was gonna rent like a different supercar every single day. So he rented this Lamborghini and me and him kind of went out just driving up and down the strip basically for hours in this Lamborghini. But we're just like laughing our asses off at the ridiculousness of ourselves with all these people on the sidewalk just yelling out Lambo at us like every time we drove past. And we just kind of had this like magical experience that really I think kind of formed the foundation of our friendship. I started writing Laravel in late 2010, and I didn't actually release it until almost summer of 2011. The first day I remember it got four stars on GitHub, and I was just like super pumped that anyone would notice this thing I had written. Like I was really excited about it, honestly, even though it was a really small start, but people just latched onto it soon after, and that was really like the first open source project I'd ever launched. So in late 2011, I was still doing .NET and I got an email from a guy named Ian Landsman who ran a company called Userscape and they build help desk software, customer support software. And he said something like, hey, you know, I saw Laravel. I really like how you set it up. I like the features and like sort of the philosophy behind it. And we want to rebuild some stuff, modernize some stuff, some of our PHP code base here at Userscape and we want to do it on Laravel. And honestly, he was kind of taking like a leap of faith, I would say on Laravel at the time because it was not the dominant PHP framework at all. You know, it probably wasn't even in the top three PHP frameworks in terms of popularity, but I guess it just like resonated with him personally and how he likes to program or whatever. I was really excited, you know, yeah, sure. And I came on board. And um, another person who started at the same time as me is Eric Barnes, the creator of Laravel News. So I, f I first met Taylor in IRC and I remember he was, you know, very approachable at the time. He was always there for anybody trying out the framework. And I was familiar with Eric because he was sort of um, 
known in the coding night or ecosystem a little bit or sort of like was in those circles. It was sort of funny. So I applied, I got hired, and then I started uh, like the first week. week of January 2012. And uh, sure enough, as soon as I you know, logged in, Taylor was there and he was working there too. And the cool thing is Ian gave me those first six months to just work on Laravel like full time because we had a lot of things we needed to do at Userscape and we needed to add those features into Laravel to like actually make it possible to do some of those things. Like I wrote the whole queue system, the whole database migration system, the whole bundling system, all in those first like six months of working at Userscape, which I think is really cool for Ian to have done at the time because like there wasn't like necessarily an immediate payoff for that. He just like had this faith in Laravel and this faith in me, I guess, to develop it and to build something cool out of it. So as we worked at Userscape together, Ian would give him every Friday off to work on Laravel. So what was really cool though is while we worked on projects throughout the week for Userscape, he would find, you know, little pain point in Laravel. And then every Friday he would fix those and just add new features for whatever we were working on to make to make our lives easier. And then eventually Ian kind of like nudged me out the door, was like, Laravel's too big, like, you know, you can do this full time. And really without Without Ian hiring me at Userscape and like taking that leap of faith, like I feel like the story of Laravel is really different because I wouldn't have been working on it full time. Like I wouldn't have nearly the focus or the time to really develop it into what it is today. And January 1st, 2015 actually was my first full time day on Laravel. And um, ever since then, I've been working on it full time as my full time job. And that's gonna be a real match. No, I thought you had it. So I got a PlayStation for Christmas. And I was telling Taylor that I got a PS4 and he's like, like, you got to download Rocket League and play me because I don't have anyone to play with because Jeffrey abandoned me. He was always better, just to be frank, which drives me nuts. And we started playing 2v2, like on the same team. And we hop on a call, like a FaceTime audio call or whatever, and just play probably, probably for an hour a day, honestly. And um, we've been playing for probably four or five years now and we're still terrible. It's super fun, you know, and the, it's like the foundation of our entire friendship at this point. We lost to the urinal buddies. <laughs> that actually does pretty much sum up our Rocket League career. Losing and more losing. We'll win next time. So the main things I remember from those early years of Laravel is just the cool people that just really, I think, catapulted Laravel to the next level. One is Dale Reese. Um, from the UK who wrote sort of the first beginner book for Laravel. Back then, the only resource you could find when you are trying to learn Laravel was the documentation and a little bit of videos here and there. But then uh, the books they Reese wrote were uh, becoming like the first results you see in Google. And it was just so popular and so instrumental for bringing so many people into the ecosystem. Like in those first few years, if you ask anyone, like, how did you get started with Laravel? like greater than 50% chance they're saying Dale Reese. <laughs> so there's, um, yeah, there's, there's an odd tale about something that shows up in the Laravel code base. So Taylor and I were headed to one of the Laracon EUs. So we agreed to take a trip together to Switzerland. And then on our second day there, we decided to take this trip up one of the mountains. And we got to the top, I realized that I, I still had GPRS. And uh, we thought, you know, what can we do? We're at the top of a mountain. We need to, to show something if we've got internet up here. We're nerds. So we decided that there was probably just enough internet that we could, uh, we could commit to the Laravel code base. I think that there's a comment that's still in the code base, or at least you'll be able to find it in the version history, uh, that just says something like, Taylor and Dale committed this from the top of the Jungfrau yacht, XXX elevation, and just like a smiley face or something like that. <laughs> I think I was, um, I was one of the first at the time to start writing about Laravel. There wasn't, really wasn't much out there apart from the documentation itself. So I would write about just the parts of the framework that would interest me. Um, and through that, I got to know Taylor. He realized that I was, I was putting together these, um, these little sort of third party pieces of documentation and people were starting to enjoy those. And I was hanging around on IRC one day and um, Eric Barnes, who was working with Taylor at the time, he suggested that I take these blog posts and turn them into a book of some kind. Um, there was nothing out for Laravel at the time, so I certainly have Eric to thank for uh, what happened after that. And I wrote uh, a book called, I think it was called Code Happy. And it was like the first starter introduction to Laravel as a full book that you could download. It was more popular than I expected. Um, uh, it was up on my website and uh, within a few weeks it had sold like thousands of copies, something I certainly didn't expect. 
I was just really happy that I was able to help push people towards this thing that Taylor had built because I was excited about it and I thought that more people needed to, to hear about it. So I first learned about Laravel from Jeffrey Way, which you'll probably hear from a lot of people. Jeffrey Way. Jeffrey. And Jeffrey. Jeffrey Way. Jeffrey. Jeffrey Way for sure is a very big reason that a lot of people know about Laravel and fell in love with Laravel because he is an, such an amazing teacher. What Dale Reese did in writing and for books, Jeffrey Way did for videos and tutorials. And he's just taken it to the next level where it's like one of the most premier tutorial sites on the internet for building web applications. Programmers know exactly what I'm talking about. When you want to learn something, it requires Googling the entire web and finding a hundred different tabs, each of which is like a little puzzle piece that solves the problem for you. And each tab is like a little aha moment where you're like, okay, this explains that definition better than anywhere else I've seen, so that helps. And this has an actual code example that I can use and see if it works. And then you kind of combine them all and that's how you learn things. But it does get a little bit frustrating. You don't know where to find the next little piece of knowledge. You know, all you have is a Google search. So Laracast was kind of built to create the educational platform that I wish had been available to me when I was first getting started. I think Laracast is probably one of the Laravel community's most important like secret weapons in terms of pulling in new people and getting people excited about the framework. When I originally launched Laracast, I got a lot of pushback because people would say to me, why are you creating Laracast? Why not create PHP casts? Why are you creating silos? Why don't you service the entire wider general community instead of focusing on this small group here? So what's nice about Laracast is it is for one type of developer. And when you join, everyone else there is just like you. If you use Laravel, if you use PHP, if you're kind of a full stack developer where you, you, you need to reach for CSS every once in a while, it is for them. It's not for Python developers. It's not for Ruby developers. They might get something out of it if they join the site, but it's not targeted at them. And actually, at the time of this recording, we're about a week out from the release. So I'm going to pull in the dev version. It's just such an amazing resource that honestly not many other frameworks enjoy to have this whole library of video tutorials where anyone can learn how to use Laravel. And he's just done an amazing job with it. And I think he's been very instrumental in recent years of onboarding so many people into the ecosystem. I'm sure Laracast has had a nice impact on Laravel's popularity, but it would be nothing without Laravel. So Laravel's success is due exclusively to, to Taylor and the, the team that works on it. I saw on Twitter that Taylor is looking for employee number one. And I thought, yeah, that, that would be nice. It would be good for the guy who will be joining Laravel as employee number one. But I never thought for a moment that it would be someone from Cairo, Egypt. So I didn't even apply. But then Taylor reached out and we had a little interview. And after that, he told me that uh, I'm, I'm going to join Laravel as employee number one. At Laravel, we get a lot of freedom to do our own thing, to handle our side of business, which we are all assigned to in our kind of ways. And that's been very like, refreshing from previous kind of uh, jobs where you had like a more stricter mindset to the way things were controlled in certain processes at the company. Honestly, it's pretty crazy. Um, I wake up every morning and working for Laravel, it doesn't really like, feels like work to me. So I really think that I am in the privileged position. I'm working so close with the community in the other side because I work with a tool that empowers so many creators out there. Working for Laravel is definitely not like working for a different company because in a company you have hierarchy and you have bosses, but within the community or working at Laravel, it's, it's mainly like your boss is actually the community. Basically, you're like we're all one big team working on Laravel, working on the paid projects, working on the open source side of things, and just like have this really strong focus to improve developer experience for every PHP developer out there and providing a really quality set of products and first party libraries to achieve that, that goal.
So as time has gone on, I've built this sort of commercial ecosystem around Laravel. Laravel is like five people or something running like three SaaS apps. Like that's unheard of. So now we've got Laravel Forge, Laravel Envoy, Laravel Spark, Laravel Nova, Laravel Vapor. And when you put them all together, they really complete the whole journey of Laravel of a really great development experience. And then they let you ship your code out to the world to launch it to the masses. That's basically all handled by the other team members at Laravel. So that I mainly focus on sort of nurturing and shepherding Laravel as an open source project because that's actually still what I'm most passionate about is not necessarily working on the commercial products, which I like building out um, in the beginning, but I like shepherding the open source project, kind of curating what features are in, what features are out, what do we need? And that's sort of like what I still am personally really interested in. So I've sort of set the business up to where I can mainly focus on that, mainly focus on open source development, R&D, and things like that. People have been inspired by Laravel, by the framework, but also by being part of the community. So we have Laravel News, we have companies building products on top of Laravel like Titan, and also so many open sources out there being inspired by Laravel. So Laravel News started 10 years ago, and it started off as a Twitter account, and then later it turned into like this news and media website that is today. Taylor and them work on the framework, and then I can take everything they work on, write about it, keep the community informed, and then they don't have to worry about writing articles and things like that. Thankfully, I've been able to hire a writer, We've got people running a podcast for us, and it's just progressively grown over these last, you know, these last 10 years. When we started Titan, it was actually just two of us, but at this point we have 30 people. As the Laravel community grew, we also grew as a company. And one of the things that really impacted our growth was when we said, you know what, we're not just a shop that happens to use Laravel. We really wanted to identify and saying, we do the best Laravel work there is. We wanted to really own that. You know, something like Tailwind CSS, I don't think would have ever been built if I had never been pulled into that world and seen what it was like to make things that could be used by, you know, millions of people definitely encouraged me to want to take the little idea that I had with Tailwind when it first started and turn that into something that could help tons of people and get lots of people excited. And all these cool things, they're also because of the community, because we are united and also because we empower each other. You can find different people from different cultures and from different backgrounds, and it accepts all kinds of people. When I knew my wife was pregnant, the first people I told about it was my friends at Laravel. Before COVID, I was in conferences like three, four, five times every year. And then COVID happened and we weren't able to see each other for over two years. And my wife actually had the idea, so why don't we just meet in some city in Europe and have some days there together. And all of a sudden, almost everybody was on board to meet in Portugal. And yeah, that's how we came up with La Rocation. So Ian Landsman had the idea to have a, a Laracon conference, which I thought was something that we couldn't pull off. Like I didn't think people would be interested enough to come to the conference. And he thought we could do it. He thought we could have a small event, maybe just a hundred people. And so we actually pulled it off and every year, you know, it just keeps getting bigger and bigger until the last Laracon we did in the U.S. had almost a thousand people in Times Squares. And it's just become this big, amazing event that we have every year, both in the U.S. and Europe and now Australia as well seeing like the Laracon logo on the corner of Times Square like blew my mind like to see that little framework that you know grew up to be something that would be on Times Square is pretty amazing. Everyone that I've talked to in the Laravel community people you see at Laracon and stuff like that uh, they're not there for work usually they're there because it feels like their favorite band is in town. I was invited to a Laracon in Amsterdam and I was kind of scared at first but uh, then it ended up being like one of my favorite conferences and that was the first time I got actually inside the community, you know, and meeting the people who are uh, actually doing Laravel work. And I really enjoyed uh, how welcoming everyone was. Uh, I think Laravel does have this sense of everybody's welcome. And you don't always get that. Sometimes there is like a, a cool kids club. And uh, I don't see that with Laravel, which is really nice.
I know some other code communities that aren't that friendly and open-minded and especially if you're a woman and you're asking a question you're like what are you doing here you don't belong here and in Laravel it's like okay you have this question you can go to Laracas or I can help you or try this and that and whatever and this is like really unique I think All right, welcome back to a season four of the Laravel podcast, the first episode where we've got an actual interviewee. So I'm your host, Matt Stauffer, and just a reminder, this season of the podcast is gonna be each episode about an individual topic that is really helpful for people who are new to the framework. I don't think I've ever seen a community that is so competitive about helping people more for free. People are racing to release more free articles, more free tutorials, more free YouTube videos, more free tools, to offer to other people for the benefit of the other people. And it's a weird kind of competition, right? It's competing to help others, not competing for your own benefit. And that's just a really fascinating and, and wonderful part of this community. So from the very first day I actually launched Laravel, I knew that I wanted the community to be a certain way. I wanted it to be friendly. I wanted it to be chill, to be welcoming. And part of that I think is because I knew like internally that everyone wants to belong to like a group. You know what I mean? Like everyone wants to have this sense of belonging. And I wanted to create that sort of like atmosphere where everyone could feel like friends and really work together to build something cool in the Laravel ecosystem from day one. So historically, the programming world has been primarily male and primarily white, especially in the US. And so what we have to do intentionally is say, if we believe that that's not the way it should be, if it should be open and accessible to everybody, that means we have to do really intentional work to make this change. The good news is there are people in the Laravel community who are actively trying to make a change. Zuzana Kunskova from Laravel's is a fantastic example because she found herself a woman in a primarily male space and said, you know what, I want to, I, I bet I'm not the only one, right? I want to find other people I can connect with. And so she made an, an intentional space for women and non-binary and trans developers to be able to be celebrated, supported, and to have a network of connection. Getting into tech, I started quite late. I wasn't one of those people that started as a teenager, so, you know, young people getting, you know, learning how to code. No, I started to code when I was 35 or 36 even. So I was kind of looking for something in common with other people. So a community for either women or parents, you know, like, new level developers, but I couldn't find anything. So I actually asked on Twitter once if there is some community for women level developers that I haven't found yet. And I was told that no, there isn't one, and why don't I create one? So this is what I did. And the purpose of Larabels is to, first of all, bring us together. So this is what I'm doing right now, bringing everyone together. The next thing I'm going to be focusing on is maybe bringing more people, maybe even new developers into Laravel. And I think this is very important. If we want to invite more people or if we want the Laravel community to be diverse, this is exactly what we need to do. We need to make people feel comfortable simply by encouraging people being nice to each other. And I think that's, that's at the beginning of everything. You have to, people need to be kind to each other and respect each other for whoever they are. I am a woman, I am a covered Muslim, and I was changing career later in life, so I was a parent as well, I had other responsibilities. So all these things invite comments from people. And the fact that I felt comfortable talking to people within the Laravel community, I think it speaks a lot about what the people are like. Ultimately, no community would need a special kind of minority mini group within the main group. Like, it'd be nice if we didn't have to have that, but having those things is how we get enough women to where we don't actually need those communities anymore. So yeah, I think Larabelle's and everything Zuzana is doing is, is fantastic. And I, I really just hope to see it, you know, keep growing and growing. When I first wrote Larabelle, I had no idea it would get as big as it got today. Um, I didn't even think it would be in the top five PHP frameworks in the world, much less to become this sort of like dominant player in the PHP ecosystem. As Laravel has grown and got more popular, larger companies have started using it. We've seen job ads from Apple looking for Laravel developers, the United States government, the Winter Olympics built their APIs on Laravel, Vice Video, the Boston Celtics have internal systems running on Laravel. There's all kinds of interesting companies using Laravel that I never would have expected to use it when I first wrote it. And I think Laravel becoming a global 
global phenomenon is one of the coolest aspects for me because it's allowed me to interact with so many people around the world. It's crazy because if I go out to you know, our analytics for the Laravel website, the Laravel website's been visited from literally every single country in the entire world. And it's just like, I never would have expected this sort of like geographical reach when I was first sitting in my apartment building Laravel in 2010. It's been a really amazing experience, honestly, and one of the coolest parts about building Laravel. As the technologies we work with change, Laravel always has to breathe and adapt. There's always gonna be new things coming. And while losing Taylor's contributions to the framework would be really rough, and of course, he's the benevolent dictator for life, right? Like, he defines what's going in and what's not going in. There are so many other people who are brilliant and capable and really creating great contributions to the Laravel framework. The thing I'm most proud of, honestly, is the impact it's had on so many people around the world. Like, there's thousands and upon thousands of people that have built a career off of something I created in my apartment in 2010. And they've been able to take care of their families, they've been able to change careers and build out a life they wanted. And to me, that's really what I'm more proud of, more so than any like technical achievement Laravel achieved. So no, I had no idea that it would be anything like it is today. And it just totally blew my mind that it would ever be this big of a deal. As an actual framework, it's really hard to imagine things that can be done to really improve things. Yet somehow every year he comes up with something new to add that no one else has thought of um, that makes it way better. I once heard that in the programming community, every two years about half of the members in the programming community is new. And you also see that if you take a look at some statistics, like how many times that Laravel is being downloaded or any of the packages, and all of these curves just go up. I think software engineering and web development, you know, we're adding thousands of new developers every year. And it's becoming more and more popular that uh, for anyone who's heard of PHP, it's sort of the natural place that they end up. And you can think like, is it growing even more? I see Taylor is always publishing new things and new features. And I know that at some point in the project, this will slow down a bit. All projects like this, have an arc and they grow and they get really big. And then at some point they just do fall off. This is how everything goes. So history would tell me that Laravel will eventually taper off a little bit. But also interesting is it's been nine years at this point, maybe more, and it's only getting bigger and bigger every year. So where Laravel is gonna go in the next five years, uh, I don't know, but I'm excited to find out. Laravel allows you to focus on just building things to solve actual people's problems. It's reignited my love for coding. It's captivated my interest for eight years now. And I don't know where I'd be without it now. I don't know if I'd still be programming, who knows? <laughs> yeah, so I consider myself a benevolent dictator for life on Laravel. And I think it has a lot of benefits, honestly, to that sort of structure behind an open source project because you can shape the project as one cohesive whole and one cohesive vision. It's hard to get everyone on the same page versus just having one person that can steer the ship in a certain way, good or bad, um, but at least you're like heading in one direction as a whole. Building a tool and having it survive and be popular for 10 years is already, I would say, a really big challenge. But then, okay, how can I take it another 10 years? Because I still like working on Laravel. Like, I'm the guy on the Titanic, you know, playing the violin all the way down. Like, I'm, I'm sailing with the ship, like, forever. So I just still think about how do I keep Laravel fresh? How do I bring new people into the Laravel ecosystem? What's the next big thing over the horizon that we can build? And that's what I still think about on a daily basis. 